Hello friends, so good to be with you this evening. Thought I would just sit down, have a cup of coffee with you. Uh, just take a couple of moments to share a few things from my heart. I started talking yesterday about prayer. I think probably right now we really need to have prayer as a major part of our life. A lot of times prayer ends up getting sidelined because we get busy, but I feel like I feel like right now is the time for you to uh, rejoin yourself with uh, what prayer is and what it does for you. Um, you know, yesterday I gave I gave uh, I gave the scripture, and I was just reading from uh, Luke chapter eleven, and I was talking about um, the Lord's prayer, what we know as the Lord's prayer, and it, it started off like this: it said. Uh, he said unto them, when you pray, say, Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Uh, thy kingdom come, thy will be done as in heaven, so on earth. Um, you know, I we, of course, yesterday we talked a lot about hallowing the name of God, what exactly that meant. Hallowed means set apart for praise. And then we broke down all of the names of God. Uh, and And so... It was basically in prayer to go into battle to acknowledge first of all, uh, which maybe maybe it's a thing of saying which name you need most at that time. Uh, you know, I told you I have many different names for myself. I have a husband, father, uh, provider, uh, dad, father, uh, pastor. I mean, there's just a you know, all of the names, and they're all they're all correct. It's just that they each one call out and define a certain aspect of my life. And God's the same way. We have He is Jehovah Shalom. He is Jehovah Sidkenu. He is Jehovah Rapha. I mean, He's our healer, our peace. He's our righteousness. He is our uh, He is our protector. I mean, all of the things. And, and so we, we discussed that when we said, hallowed be thy name, uh, that we were setting apart his name for praise. Now, again, the, the time that you do this is when you're going into prayer for something, you're going into battle. Uh, I, I think strategically, we are, we are calling God's name uh, as to what we need at that particular time. It may be in prayer that you're calling for healing. I think that's a time that you really begin to talk about Jehovah Rapha. This is what we are. Well, I mean, I, uh, Abraham did that. Abraham, whenever he was he was uh, going up to the mountain to to sacrifice Isaac, he said uh, he said the Lord will provide. He, he basically talked about Jehovah Jireh. The Lord is our provider, and for that particular need, that was the aspect of God's personality or provision that his faith was attached to. Now, I feel like from your standpoint, maybe you need healing. He is Jehovah Rapha. I think you should talk to him about that. You're Jehovah Rapha. Uh, if if uh, it's peace, you, you need to begin to talk about Jehovah Shalom. I mean, these are all things that we place that. Now, of course, I also mentioned yesterday, I said, all of the redemptive names of God were wrapped up in one name, and that was the name of Jesus. And when you say in the name of Jesus, you're actually initiating all the things that God is. All that God is is wrapped up in, in, uh, in Jesus. But anyway, he talked about that. He said, when you pray, say, Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be your name. And then he, the next statement was, Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, as in heaven, so on earth. Uh, it's a, it's amazing to me uh, the importance of the kingdom in regard to Jesus, what he taught, what he believed. Um, you, you know the the <laughs> you stop and think about it in the book of Acts. Can I, let me just read you another scripture. This is from the book of Acts, chapter one, and uh, it's uh, chapter one, verse one through three. Let me see if I can pull this up here. It says uh, the former account I made, O Theopolis of all that Jesus began both to do and to teach until the day that he was taken up. And he through many, he, he through the Holy Spirit uh, had given commandment to his, to his apostles 
whom he had chosen uh, and whom he had uh, presented himself uh, alive after suffering many days through many infallible proofs, being seen by them 40 days. And here's what it said. This is the point that I actually just want to get to in that scripture. It says, and speaking of the things pertaining to the kingdom of God. Now, that's what Jesus talked about in Luke chapter 11. He said, thy kingdom come, thy will be done. And I want you to think about it. If you were about to die, put yourself in this position right now. If you were about to die, what would you talk about? I mean, think about it. Um, I'm not talking about heaven. Uh, what would you talk about? Would, would you talk about your accomplishments? What would, you would talk about the things that were most important to you. And based on this, it says that when Jesus, as he was about to go up to his father, he said he was speaking of the things pertaining to the kingdom of God. Now, the kingdom of God is a very important aspect of your life. It truly is. It's something that you have to understand this is where Jesus worked from. This is where he thought from. And, and we have to understand that, that the kingdom is the thing that works for us. Let me tell you something. Religion prepares man to leave earth, but the kingdom empowers man to dominate the earth. You understand? Re religion, uh, it prays from earth to heaven. Oh God, up there somewhere, the old, the, the old man upstairs. You know, you've heard that before. But when you're kingdom minded, and that prays from the mindset of from heaven to earth. And what I mean by that is I'm functioning as a kingdom citizen. I'm operating maybe in this earth curse system as an ambassador, but I'm a citizen of heaven. And everything that I say concerning earth is from earth, is from heaven to earth. You understand that? Uh, religion wants to escape earth. The kingdom impacts and influences and changes the earth. Religion seeks to take earth to heaven, but the kingdom-minded, that seeks to bring heaven to earth. There's just a difference in the way that you think. And when Jesus began his prayer, he talked about, first of all, your kingdom. First, I'm gonna worship and praise who you are and what you've provided for me. And then I'm going to talk about the kingdom. The, let the kingdom come. Let the kingdom come and be established. And, and the kingdom actually means the king's dominion. When you talk about the kingdom, that means God's dominion, the kingdom dominion. It's how God's government flows down from the kingdom into the earth realm. And that's, and that's just exactly how it operates. See, because you are a citizen, you're part of the household of God, and citizens have legal rights. That's God just wants you to function that way. And you got to understanding the kingdom is to understanding the king and his dominion in your life. And a lot of people, they live their life through without ever understanding the rule of the king in their life. They really don't, they're not kingdom minded at all. You understand that? It's understanding the laws of the kingdom, the intention of the kingdom, the rights of the kingdom, uh, how the government of God works. You understand? And, and so the, the, the mindset of when you go into prayer, you're praying this first of all. You're praying, our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be your name. I, I praise, I declare, I, I set in motion the power of your name in my life. And then I begin to talk about the kingdom of God. Thy kingdom come. And what that's talking about is your kingdom to be established because he's talking about here that your will be done. He's not talking about someday. He's praying right now that your will would be done. Well, what is that? That is, is that we function from the kingdom of God. See, there's a difference between heaven and the kingdom. Heaven is a place uh, that resides, that you, you have parents that are there. I have parents that are there. We have friends that have left this place and they're gone and they reside in the presence of God, in heaven. Heaven is a real place. Don't ever let anybody convince you that it's not. Heaven is a real place. But the kingdom, it's not just a place where you dwell. Kingdom is the government that is upon his shoulders. Everything from heaven functions through the power 
of the kingdom in my life. And so when I see my situation, I see it through the constitution of the kingdom. Now, you know what a constitution is here on earth. We have the constitution in the United States and the constitution says you have certain inalienable rights. You know, you have a right for this. You, and there's been, there's been the constitution, the, the amendments, all of the things that make up your rights and privileges as being a citizen of America or of whatever country that you're a part of. Uh, every country has a constitution. Every country has, has a document that declares who they are and the rights of the citizens that operate within, within that framework. And so when you talk about the kingdom, you're not talking about a place where people go reside. You're talking about the, from what Isaiah chapter nine says, and the government shall be upon his shoulders. When we talk about the kingdom, we're talking about the government of God, how it is established. And he's saying in prayer, when you go to prayer, you, you filter it through the kingdom. Thy kingdom come, and as a result of your kingdom coming, your will be done here, just like it's done in heaven. Let your will be done on earth like it's done in heaven. And how am I going to make that happen? I do that through the government of the kingdom of God that functions in my life right here. Jesus talked about that. He said that he said the kingdom is within you. Well, what's he talking about? You know, he wasn't talking about heaven. I mean, heaven's a, heaven is a real place. You know it's a real place. I mean, it's a, a heaven is a, is a place where, where people are. Heaven is a place where God resides. There's, there's life. There's all kinds of things going on in heaven right now. But when he talks about the, and this is why when people can even be born again, but they get into sin or they get into misconduct, and what, it, what happens is it makes the government of God stop working in their life. The, the kingdom isn't working for them. You know, a very familiar passage of scripture that talks about a husband and wife shouldn't be in strife because their prayers will be hindered. When you get in contention with people, unforgiveness, sometimes people have unforgiveness in their heart and, and uh, they, they don't understand how much that impacts uh, who they are. It, it impacts their functioning in the kingdom. They're praying but nothing's happening. Um, they're, they're, they're praying, but according to Second uh, Peter chapter one, uh, their knowledge is unfruitful. It's not bearing fruit. They know all the scriptures, but, it, but it's not working for them. Why? They're saved. Well, I love God. Yeah, I know it, but there's things that we do and behaviors we have that stops the government of God from functioning in my life. So you have to understand there's a difference between the heaven and the kingdom of God. I know there's a lot of there's a lot of attitude that says, well, if you ever do a sin, then you're separated from you're separated from heaven, and that's simply not true. Uh, you know, John said, "My little children, I write to you that you sin not." Well, he, he was saying that because he knew people would, and he said. I don't want you to sin, but if you do, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, the righteous. Well, just because you blew it doesn't mean that you're cut off from heaven. You, you've been born again. You're a child of heaven, but the government of the kingdom is not functioning in your life. And what's happening is, is when the government of the kingdom is not functioning in your life, well, the bottom line is, is that his will is not going to be done. It's not his will that any perish, but we know that they do. It's not his will that a lot of things happen, but we know that it does. Well, the reason why is because we've stopped functioning from the kingdom. We keep asking God to come down and do something. He already did something. I mean, the Bible said he became sin for us, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. He did everything that he's going to do there at the cross because he empowered you to be born again. He empowered you to receive the gifts of the Spirit. He empowered you for all of these things. But I'm just telling you, the kingdom is not going to function in your life, even though you love God, even though God provided all of the things at the cross for you, it's not gonna work for you if you're doing things that are contrary to, uh, to the kingdom. And, and let me just tell you this, 
the nature of the kingdom, the DNA of God, it all operates by love. The Bible said faith, which works by love. See, everything operates by love. When you go contrary to love, suddenly the kingdom stops working for you. That's why when you get into strife, contention, the kingdom stops working for you. The government of God. See, we've got, we've got, we've got the concept of the government of God working in our life. Now, those of you that know, and again, I'm gonna use America. For those of you that may be watching from another country, just understand and apply it to your own, to, to your own constitution. But there's a lot of people when they talk about, well, I'm getting this, uh, I'm getting this help or this benefit from the government. Well, what you're talking about there is you're talking about the laws that have been passed in your behalf. That that's the government that is is um, maybe it's intangible, but it's it's very present. You know, I lean on the government of the United States, which is the empowering of the United States of America to give me what I need to get. Well, that's the same thing. We're not talking about heaven, the place where God lives. We're talking about the government. And when it said in, in uh, uh, Isaiah 9, when he said the government will be upon his shoulders, uh, what he was saying was, is through the name of Jesus, that gives you access to all the government of God, the, the entire government, which is the kingdom of God, is, is there for you for this reason, to accomplish his will in earth just like it's done in heaven. So whenever I begin to function in the kingdom of God, all of a sudden I'm functioning in the rights and the privileges. The word of God is my constitution. It is, a, it is the new covenant that I have with God through Jesus Christ. So, so I understand this is why it's important that whenever I'm going to approach God in behalf of a need that I have, whether it be healing or whether it be whatever the case is, I approach him first of all through praise, but then secondly, I approach him with a mindset of the government of God, the kingdom of God functioning through my life because everything comes from the kingdom. I'm empowered by the kingdom. I'm enriched by the kingdom. I am healed by the kingdom, the government of God. That's providing the laws that sustain all that God is, is brought to bear in what we know as the kingdom of God. And that's at work in my life through the name of the Lord Jesus. The government of God shall be upon his shoulders. The kingdom of God is manifest and carried out through the wonderful name of Jesus. So when I need healing, what I'm doing is I'm, I'm entering first, because you know it's true. Most people, what they do is they go in when they in prayer, they just get their grocery list out and just tell God how bad everything is. Well, this is terrible and that's awful. And dear God, you gotta do something. And where's God in my situation? And, and the proper way for you to actually function in prayer is first to come with praise adoration of who God is. Now, can I say this one more time? I, I may have said it yesterday. I, I don't know if, if I did, please forgive me for, for saying this, but uh, somebody said to me one time, why would God say, praise me? It almost sounds like he's so insecure that he needs someone to praise him. Praise me, praise me. And that is totally misunderstanding the point. What God was saying is, is when you're coming into battle, make the declaration of who I am and what I bring to the table in your life. That's praise. To praise is to declare the mighty works of God. To, to praise isn't just to say, oh, praise you, praise you. Really, to praise is declare the mighty works of God. So I go into my battle declaring the mighty works of God. That's, that's praise. That is. <laughs> I'm not telling God how big my mountain is. I'm telling my mountain how big God is. Does that make sense to you? So that's how I'm entering. And then secondly, I turn my attention 
to the kingdom of God where all of the power of God flows through the government of God that gives me rights and privileges. And it's written in your, in, in your Bible. He promised you healing. He promised you deliverance. That is a covenant with God. The first covenant was cut between a God that could not fail and a man that would fail, Abraham. The second covenant was cut between a God that could not fail and a man who could not fail, the Lord Jesus Christ. See, the covenant that you have, that you're a partaker in, is not between God and you. Do you understand that? The covenant that we are partaker in was a covenant that was between God and the Lord Jesus Christ. That covenant cannot be broken. That's why it's important when we talk about I'm in him. You read the book of Colossians, it says over and over, in, in whom, in him, uh, in him. You know, I just, it's talking about, because the fact is, is all that we have is when we're in Christ. And without Christ, uh, we were like those that the Bible talked about. We were without God. We were aliens from the covenants of promise and without God in this world. But now in Christ Jesus, you who were far off are now made nigh by the blood of Christ. That's what the word of God says. So I'm in covenant with God. And through that covenant, the kingdom is functioning in my life. And as long as I don't get out of love, and do something stupid, the kingdom will begin to continue to flow. That's why, that's why when things aren't working, that one of the very first things I do is a self-analysis. I need to find out, am I doing something wrong? I need to make sure that everything is right in my heart. And most of that isn't, well, I'm, I'm, I'm drinking and smoking and chewing. It's not that. I, you know, there, there are certain habits that you shouldn't have but I think the greater thing that eliminates you from functioning in the kingdom is when you stop working, stop walking in love. That's 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 the that's the thing. Ephesians chapter three. Uh, Lord, if I can if I can pull this, I've got so many things running through my head right now. But it says when we are rooted and grounded in love that we're able to comprehend with all the saints the length, the breadth, the depth, and the height and to know the love of God that passes knowledge. Now, so, so you gotta understand that when we are rooted and grounded in love, the kingdom of God functions. We're able to function in the kingdom of God in a way that we otherwise could not. And when we get out of love and we get in strife and we get in contention and we're mad at this one and we're upset at that one and we hate that and over there, well, I guarantee you one thing, you can be saved and yeah, you're going to heaven, but I promise you the kingdom isn't functioning in your life. Now, what's in the kingdom? Well, Jesus talked about the children's bread. You know, when he told that woman, he said, uh, she said, come and heal my daughter. Jesus said, well, it's not really right that we take the children's bread and cast it to dogs. So the children, what, what children is he talking about? The children of the kingdom. So healing the children's bread should be, the healing should be as common to us as bread is to your children. It should be. But the fact is, is we've alienated ourselves from the government of God working through our life because we we had strife and division. You know, that's that's what Paul said in uh, uh, 1 Corinthians chapter three. He said, you know, I desired to feed you with, with meat, but I couldn't do it because there was envy and jealousy and division among you. And he said, are you not carnal and walk as men, you're babes. So, so you have to understand that the kingdom of God is, is where all of the provision that you're about, because remember, we're talking about prayer. You're, when we're talking about all the things, because we're about to ask for bread, you know, because I, I think the next one coming up is he said, give us this day our daily bread and uh, lead us not into temptation. He's going to go into all those other things. But before he gets there, he's saying, first of all, make sure that the, that the function of the kingdom is operating in your life. Uh, and, and you have to understand that because it's only through that kingdom that the will of God is going to be done here or in your situation. I, I, I want to change that uh, I, I, because I have a tendency sometimes you think that let the will of God be done 
on earth as it is in heaven. I think more accurately because he's talking about prayer and I'm praying about something here. And so I think what he's saying is uh, about the kingdom is that his will would be done in that thing I'm praying for just like it is in heaven, not just in earth in general. We're not talking about earth in general. We're talking about give us our daily bread. We're talking about other things, meeting our needs. So I want you to understand the value and the importance of the kingdom of God in your life. And, and that's what he was teaching. When you're going to go to prayer, begin that prayer, you know, where, where he began to say, Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Thy kingdom come, and as a result, thy will be done in my situation, just like your will is done in heaven. Well, see, I have a part to play. Somebody said, well, God's will is always going to be done on earth. Not necessarily. Not necessarily, because there's a lot of times we do not partake of it. Uh, the Bible said it's not his will that any perish, but you know they do. You know they do. So the, we have a part in how that functions in our life. So you can do something, that even though it's God's will for something to happen, you can abort it through nasty attitudes, unforgiveness, strife, hatred. You, you can. You can abort it. And, and so uh, I, want, I want to just say to you today, the kingdom of God has everything you need. The government of God has everything you need, and it's, it's housed in this kingdom that functions through my life. And that way, that, that reason is that I stand up today and I talk about the power of God and the kingdom is presented to you. The government of God is presented to you. Do you understand? I mean, I could go on and on with that, but I just this is how you enter prayer. And if, if you don't understand this, like I said, you'll just get your grocery list out and just tell God how, much, how terrible of a job he's done and how you don't know how you're going to make it and whatever. But, but there are things that position you for the supernatural to happen in your life. And the first one, the first one is declaring the greatness and the goodness of God as you go into your battle. And secondly, engaging the government of God or the kingdom of God in your behalf. And I promise you, uh, if, if you, if you will understand the power of the kingdom, then your life will function here as though it were in heaven. I believe you can have heaven on earth. I do. I do. The will of God be done in my life just like it's done in heaven. In my situation, concerning my healing, concerning my deliverance, concerning getting my needs met. You might say, well, I just don't believe that because I've had problems. I know that. But stop and think, most people never approach God in a proper way. And I, I just think it's something you should consider. But this is what I wanted to bring to you today. I just think this is a very important aspect of it. I'm going to spend this entire week talking concerning the kingdom and specifically the, the Lord's Prayer. I want, I want to talk to you about how to move into a season of prayer by the pattern that Jesus gave us. So don't miss, don't miss a day. I promise there'll be things maybe you've never even thought of before, and I think it'll be a blessing to you, okay? Thank you so much for joining me today. I do, sincerely, I do appreciate it. Uh, please push like, push share, uh, push subscribe. I would, I would deeply appreciate it. Uh, you can go to my website, uh, Jerry Edmund at uh, jerryedmond.com. And uh, uh, I've got a lot of things there um, that I, I think will be of benefit to you and a blessing to you, all right? So I'm out of here and I'm gonna talk to you tomorrow. So I wanna say thank you for your friendship. Thank you for being my friend. Thank you for being my friend. I deeply appreciate it. And I'm looking forward to seeing you next time. All right, God bless you.